because I'm rambly today, which is good because I tend to get better information when I'm rambly. <sighs> but it's gonna probably be a long video for all this. There's like, there's not a lot of information in this video, but I'm making it really long, so sorry. So I have to trust what I, like, what I know instead of what my head is telling me, which is really weird because you'd think that those would be the same thing, but they're not most of the time. Today's date is Thursday, August 24th, and I'm not sure whether you saw my little part I added to the intro of the last video that I just forgot to say in my actual video, but I'm going to be posting all videos on Friday now that I'm starting back at school and it will be a lot busier. Hello! In this video, I'm going to talk about four disorders that are somewhat related to anxiety, but not like actual anxiety disorders, except for one, agoraphobia. Other than that, I'll be also talking about OCD, ADHD, and PTSD. I'll begin with talking about what it is and the general symptoms or what symptoms I have, as well as the little I relate to of them. And then I'll say whether I think I have this now after going over the symptoms. And I'm not going to be talking about coping mechanisms in this video or in another one because I don't have the disorder enough to know how to deal with it. Beginning with agoraphobia, this is really closely related to panic disorder, but I kind of forgot to include it in my panic disorder video, so I'm just going to squeeze it in here. And it's a much smaller disorder compared to panic disorder, like at least in my life. Plus I already mostly explained it in panic disorder. Agoraphobia is thought to be the fear of open spaces or public areas, but it is actually avoidance of situations or places due to previous panic attacks. I'm going to talk about how I relate to both what it was thought to be and what it actually is because I can't find the actual disorder, I guess. So for me personally, I have a fear of open spaces, which I talked about in my phobias video, like physically open spaces, which does not have to do with large objects or people or public areas. It's just large open spaces, which is due to my walking and recovery of knee operations. I think it's just because there's less items around me that I can grab onto if I have anxiety. It's not really a fear, but I do not like crowds or big groups of people, it gives me anxiety, which I think would fall more into the social anxiety part rather than agoraphobia, or the previous meaning of agoraphobia. For example, uh, in my arts program at my school, there was a art gala in May, and when I came into the room, there was like probably a hundred people in there, and I was supposed to check in with somebody. And I never not do things that I'm supposed to do even if it gives me anxiety because it's like an actual told instruction. If I have to do it, then I will. And I knew that I had to do it, but I still wasn't able to do it because of the crowds of people and it just overwhelmed me entirely and I actually started crying in the corner. It was really awkward. That's an example of crowds of people that give me anxiety. But I definitely do have agoraphobia because I avoid situations that have previously caused me panic attacks and I couldn't think of a specific example but I know that I've felt the feeling before. Any social events or even times that I would invite friends over, I usually start panicking, not to the point of having an anxiety attack but to the point that I feel like I'll regret it if I hang out with them because I know that it gives me anxiety, so that's kind of an example. So do I have this? I know that I definitely do in both senses of what it was thought to be and what it actually is, so I'm definitely agoraphobic in all senses. Moving on to the second one, OCD. So OCD is Obsessive Compulsive Disorder, and as you can probably tell from the name, or you might already know because it's kind of common, it consists of obsessions and compulsions. Obsessions being unwanted and intrusive thoughts, impulses, or images. And they don't just leave with logic. So if you think, well, that's a stupid thought, why am I thinking that? It's not going to go away. It stays there even if you try to tell it not to. And compulsions are ritualistic behaviors and routines responding to the thoughts to prevent further anxiety. Even though the cycle repeats and ends up causing you even more anxiety over time, it's just a temporary relief, which isn't worth it. From my research, I found that there are five main types of compulsions. Cleaning, which tends to have to do with germs or bacteria or fear of being infected, like some people will wash their hands up to their elbows several times a day, or sometimes they sanitize or they obsessively clean. 
I've heard of spraying Febreze and bringing antibacterial wipes everywhere and wiping things down before you touch them or eat them, like even banana peels, which is an example that I read. Repeating, such as repeating phrases, people fear harm if they're not done. Most people know that if you repeat the phrase, it won't stop the danger, but they're afraid that other harm will come if they don't do it. I don't know if that makes sense. Like, I don't have this part of the disorder, so I can't explain it very well, but I'm trying, so. Checking. Some people check ovens or sinks, taps to see if they're off several times due to a previous accident or incident. Ordering and arranging. This tends to have to do with symmetry, which might be why people like things in odd numbers instead of just even, even though... even though... <laughs> even numbers would be symmetrical too. They also might have to have their items or objects, like for example, books stacked just so. And they might have to do it several times to get it right in a particular pattern. Mental compulsions. So you pray or say things to redu reduce anxiety. For me personally, I am much more obsessive than compulsive. The closest uh, compulsion that I think I might have is mental compulsive, where I say something to try to make my anxiety subside over again, like no, and I repeat it several times just to get the image out of my head but honestly, not really. Like, I just try to ignore it to the best of my ability. I have an obsessive personality in general. I'll give you a few examples of things I've recently obsessed over. So like, YouTubers. Let's start there. So my big huge obsession where I binge watched all the videos started with Anna on the channel How Senseless Death, How Precious Life. She's awesome, I should link it below, check her out. Then it moved on to Shani from Educating Shani. Then Gabby from Recovery Flower. I think I made a mistake in one of my last videos because I tagged her as Recovery Flower X, but that's just that's her social media username, but her YouTube username is just Recovery Flower. And then Donnie, who kind of has a channel but hasn't posted lately because he's taking a mental health break, which I understand, and that's totally fine. But Cherry Boy, which I should probably also link below, but I met him through you now. I've just jumped from people. Like, this is probably a really bad example, but it's like a really clingy boyfriend or girlfriend where they always want to spend time with you and always want to hang out with you, always want to be with you. If you're apart from them, they'll always be thinking of you, spamming you with text messages or tagging you in things, calling you, whatever. That's basically me with these people. I think that they'll think that I'm crazy because I act crazy, but I try to keep it on the down low, so I might have just revealed myself a little there. But that has to do with my really obsessive personality. Not sure if this is related entirely to OCD, it just might be a type of obsessive personality. But I don't think I have an addictive personality because I'm not addicted to things. It's not like I need them, it's just that I obsess over them. Don't know how to like differentiate that, but I hope that kind of made sense. Then I'd also have food cravings, like for example my recent ones have been from ice cream to pudding to smoothies, where it's the only thing I want and I'll have it like a gazillion times a day. Although that's me with other food too, like I tend to eat the same- I, can't, I tend to fluctuate between about eight foods that I like within like a year and then the next year I'll pick like four different ones and then mix those in. Like, so basically anything goes from, yeah I like this, to I love this and it's everything I need and have ever wanted in my life in like- within like three days. If that. Honestly. I'm also a perfectionist, mostly when it comes to my homework. I think I have talked about this before, where if I have a homework assignment, like for example with math, I will work on it until I understand it to the best of my possible ability, which is technically great, and I guess that's why everyone says I'm a good student. I'll work myself to the point of it actually causing me harm, mental harm because I'll stay up as late as I need to, which sometimes can be to like midnight and then I get like six hours of sleep, which is not good for me. I need at least nine hours of sleep to be able to like function and learn things and retain information, which makes it really difficult. But yeah, so I just obsess over my homework and I put all, my, all of my attention into that and no attention into anything else that I need to do. I usually don't take breaks for three or four hours at a time because I'm just so focused that I feel like I have to get it done. Like it is literally everything in the whole world and nothing else matters. That's also an example of hyper-focusing, which I'll get into on ADHD. The ordering and arranging compulsion might also be something that I have, or it might just be because I'm bored, but I do like to order and arrange things, like for example the apps on my phone screen, I order them until they look right, 
and they look better with color but I also need them to relate e to each other so I'll spend a few minutes like mixing them around and it doesn't make sense necessarily where they're placed but just so it looks proper to me I don't know if that's normal and then with books I do that too although I like to try to have them by type of book although I'll be so specific that I'll want the colors to match but the colors can't match with the type of book neither will the author or the titles and then right before a test usually I have a booklet and a scantron so I'll put the booklet to my left and then the scantron to my right since I'm right-handed and then the eraser on top of like the scantron and the pencil sharpener above that and the pencil to the right of that and I try to make everything straight but that might just be because I'm bored and I don't really have anything else to do however that is an example of me being a perfectionist but it is not so overkill like that part anyway that I caught that it causes me to like lose sleep over and I've had a love for organizing as young as I can remember like anything I will be ecstatic to organize <laughs> honestly and then as for the most obsessive part of the OCD that I think I might have I'll often get images flashing in my mind of my knees dislocating as I'm walking across an open space which had to do with the agoraphobia kind of phobia thingy I don't know some kind of phobia and it'll cause me to have anxiety and try to avoid walking straight through it because I think something bad is going to happen like I said I'll either try saying no like in my mind usually not out loud because I don't want to look crazy not that I'll look crazy <sighs> but you know what I mean it's like a flashback that just keeps going so I'll see it in my mind like knee dislocating knee dislocating falling down knee dislocating knee dislocating knee dislocating and it's like actually overwhelming because I think and I feel and I it controls my actions so I'll move to one side just keep going when I feel brave enough like try to ignore it and push it to the back of my mind because I know that it's not happening and like I realistically know that it's not happening and I've had operations to make sure that it doesn't happen so I have to trust what I like what I know instead of what my head is telling me which is really weird because you think that those would be the same thing but they're not most of the time do I think I have this although I do have some like symptoms in some parts I'm not entirely sure when I wrote the script I said not quite but honestly I think I might a little bit but I might also just be a perfectionist it might be other anxieties like my open space problem rather than OCD. I don't think it's severe enough like it doesn't I mean I know people always talk about their mental illnesses making them feel not sick enough to have the disease which might be where my thinking's coming from from not severe enough but I just don't think it's severe enough to be considered a mental disorder however I could be wrong very well and I have very few compulsion behavior I don't really feel like I have compulsions as much like I don't feel like the need to do anything to fix the thoughts I just try to get them to go away